Is there a parallel, would you say, between people who have these experiences, and you mentioned this before, that they are somehow invested in the new age? Or does this happen to just regular people and Christians alike? I mean, how, what kind of people experience these things? Well, there's been a lot of studies on that. And one fact that has come out is that there are uh, a lot of people have a connection with the occult and new age mm. um, experiences or they, they seek it out or they're you know, they'll, they'll play with the Ouija board or they'll, they'll do tarot cards. Like, like Whitley Strieber, for example, has admitted to, you know, I've, he was into tarot cards, he was into Zen, meditation, all that stuff with, you know, automatic writing, um, meditation. What was the thing that he was, he was saying? Um, astral projection, all that kind of stuff. Altered state of consciousness. All those things are, are you know, are doors to this. But there are people who have not been involved in it like children for example there have been a lot yeah. of cases where children have had these kind of abduction experiences hmm. but when you look a little closer a lot of times it's seen that their parents did and so the researchers are saying well the the children might not have been directly involved in the occultic door but their parents did or someone else very close to them did hmm. um, and it does happen to christians people christians can have these experiences um, I know several people who have seen UFOs, and it's really the ones that are closer, the closer encounters, like mm -hmm. seeing the actual beings, having interactions, being abducted, uh, being a contactee, those kind of things. Those are the ones where you really get more involved, or you see the connections. But, there, you, you know, Christians can have these experiences, and they can see the, the lights in the sky or, or a saucer or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and statistically speaking, um, you know, you've got a lot of followers. Uh, there are a lot of followers here. I, I would bet that you have a lot of followers in your channel who have seen a ufo had an experience or know someone who has mm -hmm. in fact if you go to an average church and ask them have you seen a ufo or do you know someone who has a lot of hands would go up mm -hmm. and this is an area where i think this is one area of interest uh regarding this topic is the the church has really dropped the ball on this kind of of aspect of spirituality because there are a lot of people who are having experiences don't know where to go or what to do mm -hmm. and it's really depressing when people have these kind of experiences, it's really depressing. It's it's um, it's dark. It's evil. Uh, even people who claim that it's it's some kind of an enlightening process, they 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 are depressed. A lot of people are suicidal. Mm -hmm. Some people have died in these kind of in these experiences. Hmm. Um, it's just it's bad, and the church needs to start realizing that and and helping people in these regards. Yeah, I think that it's one of those topics that's it's not talked about enough. The only other person I've ever known to really dig into this was Dr. Mike Heiser, right? Uh, the late Dr. Mike Heiser, and so it's it's nice to see someone else kind of you know of, of a certain pedigree tackle these things in a non conspiratorial way. Yeah. I think that there's a a cerebral way to approach it where yeah, it's not yeah. yeah where it's not sensational. It's not you know a there's a stigma. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a stigma. And I have to admit, so I, I was very Pentecostal when I was younger. I was in the word faith movement for a little while. Oh, you were? I didn't know oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I came out of that when I was, when I was a teenager. Uh -huh. And then um, I think I probably swung a little bit too far on the opposing spiritual type stuff. Uh -huh. And uh, it's easy to do that. So now I'm seeing through my UFO studies that you know, there are a lot of spiritual things. This is pretty, pretty undeniable. Hmm. Um, and I think the church needs to just get away from, you know, not worry about the stigma. People are, are having these experiences and, and not just this, but stuff like this. And, um, as Marcia Montenegro says, I know you, I think you know her, right? Yeah. She's in front of well, me, yeah. yeah. Well, as, as she had written in, in her book, I have it behind me. There's a, there's a seductive aspect of all this to people, children, especially there's a lot yeah. of stuff that has come out in the last, well, several decades. And it just it draws people in. And that's one of the things that Keel says. It's very dangerous. She has a point with the occult. Um, and I think it was Hillary Ferrer, Hillary Morgan Ferrer. She's uh, Mama Bear Apologetic. She writes mm -hmm. uh, books for that. And right. she wrote something one time that I never forgot. And it was so very obvious, but she very succinctly put it that uh, people are drawn to the occult because it works. <laughs> like yeah. there's a reason there's a seduction there. Uh, it's not because it, there isn't, it's not producing results. In other words, right. people are drawn to this because it is producing results. And so there lies the, the seduction of it. Um, 
So, yeah, and I think that Christians can kind of be involved in that too, which kind of segues me yeah. into my last question for you. I, I'm especially, especially those that have come out of the new age. And you mentioned, I call this the, pel the pendulum problem, where people come out of the new age and they are, they go one of two ways. Either they jump into like a hyper charismatic state where everything they did in the new age is just Christianized. Okay. Or yeah. they go to this far, just super hard cessationist stance where anything that looked like what they came out of uh, in the new age is just evil, demonic. No, no, no. I don't want to be deceived again. And so it's yeah, just, it's, right. they, they, they balance out usually as time goes on. What would you say to Christians that do have an unhealthy uh, obsession with this topic or might have even had an experience that leads them to look into this in an unhealthy way? Yeah, so there's a there's a, a border here. If you're going to do apologetics or study stuff, you have to know what, what the other side says. Yep. Now, Ron Rhodes used to say if for every cultic book he read, he would read two Christian books to kind of mm. <laughs> counterbalance yeah. it. Um, and it is very, let me, let me read what John Keel says. Again, he's, a, he's very anti-Christian, not just non-Christian, he's anti-Christian. Hmm. There's enough in his eighth tower, first chapter, to, to make a whole apologetic conference from. Wow. But here's what he says. He says, dabbling with UFOs can be as dangerous as dabbling with black magic. The phenomenon preys upon the neurotic, the gullible, and the immature. Paranoid, schizophrenia, demonomania, and even suicide can result, and wow. has resulted in a number of cases. A mild curiosity about UFOs can turn into a destructive obsession. For this reason, I strongly recommend that parents forbid their children from becoming involved. School wow. teachers and other adults should not encourage teenagers to take an interest in the subject. So I actually had to check myself on this because I thought, well, am I getting too obsessed with it? Oh, interesting. Because, yeah. because you know, I, it has been for about three years. I've, I've read a lot of stuff on it. I've talked to people. I've interviewed people. Um, and I've had to ask People, you know, is, you know is, where's the line here with this? You say, well, the line seems to really be as, as you're just researching, that's fine. But once you start kind of paying homage to it, like, well, maybe there's something to this. Let me, let me check it out and kind of try it out, like you were saying. Let me just kind of try out and see what the results are. Mm -hmm. Once you start actually opening doors, that's where it gets dangerous. Mm -hmm. So if someone has an interest, that's one thing. If there's an obsession, that's where it gets dangerous. And especially if you start dabbling with things that seem innocuous, like, like um, the Ouija board, well, let's think about Parker Brothers or whatever. You start doing stuff that seems harmless. Um, that's when you start opening doors that you don't you don't realize you're opening. Um, and so I would just say, and if you've had an experience, this is where I think the church needs to come in. Mm -hmm. If you've had an experience, then I think the answer to this is by uh, going to Christ and looking for deliverance. And if you're interested or if you're wondering if you had an experience, then I would encourage you to read Joe Jordan's book, Piercing the Cosmic Veil, um, and talk to people who are mature in the faith, who have, have studied this or other kind of issues like this, who can help you. Don't keep it to yourself, because that, I think, is part of the deception. Well, you're, everything's okay. It's fine. Just keep going. It's like anything else. It's just one more step, one more step, and you're, you're way further back than you thought you would ever go. Mm -hmm. So don't don't do it alone. Don't don't do this by yourself. Look for somebody to help you with that. Um, I'm happy to talk to anybody who's interested in talking about this as well. Um, just don't think that dabbling in it is is something that that is just an innocent kind of thing to do. Hmm. You have to kind of look for the the indicators for what you're doing, why you're doing it, and what are the results.